good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst with Red Cloud Securities, and I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on gold exploration today. We will hear from Stephen Wilkinson, President and CEO of Golden Futures Mineral Corp. During today's webinar, he will provide an overview and outlook, then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time, and we will get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first, we need to discuss the fine print. During this Golden Futures webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of their corporate presentation that then that can be found on the company's website, goldenfuturesmineralcorp.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. Please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures pertaining to Golden Futures. So Golden Futures is primarily focused on its flagship Hercules Gold project located in the Geraldton Beardmore area of Northern Ontario, Canada. Uh, this project hosts high-grade high gold veins. Uh, it's seen some historic work, including an existing resource. And Golden Futures is coming in with a scientific approach to build on that past work and further explore the project's potential. Uh, with that, I now turn it over to Stephen to update our audience on the company. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and that was a great synopsis of, of uh, the company and its project. Uh, that's it. Uh, we'll just jump through here. And of course, uh, he, he mentioned these forward-looking statements. Please read it in detail and uh, answer the quiz questions at the end of the show. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Golden, Golden Futures uh, acquired this property about a year and a half ago uh, in a joint venture with Argonaut. Uh, the we have an option to earn up to ninety percent of the pro of the property, and and uh, we've got to, another five years with, with which to earn our interest. What attracted us to the property, of course, is that is that uh, it, it was explored principally uh, since two thousand and six to two thousand and ten by Kodiak, which is now a subsidiary of Argonaut. And during that time, uh, they developed uh, quite a reputation for the ground. The Hurricanes Gold Project, is the, the flood, uh, as you see there, the top line, was the 2008 Northern Ontario Discovery of the Year uh, because of the outstanding results it was getting in drill, uh, drill core and, and enhanced samples of trenches. During 2010, they, they did uh, put together uh, a resource on uh, the areas that were drilled in detail. Roughly a million tons in total were, were uh indicated and inferred and the overall grade was would have been un, uncapped at least to about seven grams per ton which is a very good grade for uh, for any new uh, de deposits being discovered nowadays uh what's interesting of course and i'll, I'll bring this up even more that during that five-year period uh when kodiak was working on the property they expended more than 25 million dollars which is a lot of money and uh, to you know to be spending on simply a drill project and that limited length of time the thing that's interesting is they really only looked at uh, about 90 uh, 10 percent pardon me of the property that they held at the time uh, and the remaining ground as you'll see is very very intriguing we found a number of other occurrences within there and i'll talk to that a little, a little further the location of the property of course it being in the Beardmore Geraldton camp, the fourth largest camp in Canada, is that you can literally hear the transports driving on the Trans-Canada Highway just to the south of the property. It has uh, uh, hydroelectric power uh, running literally along the south boundary of it, natural gas as the rail paved highways. And of course, being a mining uh, camp, it, uh, it has all the remaining infrastructure you need. So it's got all the earmarks of what you'd like to have in a property. Yeah, as you can see, being in central Ontario, it's it's in a, one of the better, better jurisdictions in the world. Uh, you know, there's an international airport at Thunder Bay for uh, for flights in and out, and Trans Canada runs uh, from Thunder Bay through through the uh, Beardmore Geraldton area. the The camp, of course, is is uh, 
been quite renowned over its years uh, for production, but it's only been in the, in the last decade or so that uh, a truly world scale property has been developed. And that's the Geraldton uh, uh, property, the Hard Rock Greenstone mine, which has got uh, about a reserve of about five and a half million ounces of mineable, and about four and a half million ounces that are developing right now. And of course, that's that's bringing a fair bit of attention to to the uh, to the area. Um, our property, of course, we've expanded it a few times. We now stand at nearly 500 claims and, and 10,000 hectares. So it's a, certainly we have a large area of, with which to to uh, be working on. And of course, prior to starting our current drill program, we we had uh, a lot of interfacing with the three band, bands, the Ojibwe bands in the area. And they're quite supportive of our project. In fact, they're even supplying some of the contracting work that we do on the property as, we, as we're working away right now. It's so things to, to keep in mind for the Hercules. This is not a, not simply a one vein structure. Uh, this this actually has got uh, in within the area of intense mineralization about a dozen or so known high grade veins. As I mentioned, the the, the previous resource uh, it does have a, a pretty well established uh, starting point with a million tons, hosting about two hundred thousand ounces. You know this, but the other benefit to us comes from the fact that there is this quite an extensive background in terms of historical work that's been uh, completed on the property. In fact, it goes back almost 70 years uh, that we've been able to, to get from the government files. Uh, we estimate right now that just that work that Kodiak did it would be uh, have a replacement value in the order of about $35 million. Um, I did that estimate uh, uh, last year and uh, certainly with our COVID headaches that we've, we've been uh, living through and escalating costs and so forth, that may, may have gone up as much as another 10% replacement costs. So, so it's a very valuable asset that we've got to begin with and, and to be looking through the rest of the property. Now the, the, the host, principal host for the, uh, for the gold mineralization in the camp is, is uh, the Almahers like intrusive complex. It's a granite diuretic rock, granitic anyways, um, and, but it's quite a composite intrusive unit. Uh, on the map, you can see that there's two, two sort of interesting uh, things to point out. Uh, first of all, the, the small green rectangles are the areas of principal exploration on pretty well all the, the work in, uh, since 2006 has been concentrated on. There are historic occurrences throughout the property, and we've noted those on the, on the map. But uh, certainly the, the follow ups not been done. And uh, so we've got the, a huge opportunity here, uh, both within the detailed explored areas and new new uh, zones that we're picking up on. Uh, so, here we go. Now, the Golden Mile is, is the is the feature zone of the of the property. Uh, the, it's a uh, up to a bonanza grade. Uh, mineralization it's it's a uh, very uh, laterally continuous uh, uh, vein structure uh, the vein itself averages about two to right, two two and a half uh, meters uh, thick uh, but it runs we've been able to trace it now for about three thousand meters so it's actually maybe we should change the name to the golden two mile zone the um, uh, some of the samples of course have been very very spectacular but but uh, we certainly are lo looking at uh, 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 some strong uh, uh, indicators f with which to trace this zone out. Certainly the colorful uh, purples and reds and yellows uh, and oranges here, are, they're, they're signifying highly magnetic associated rocks with the veining, what we call the black ma black mafic magnetic unit. And the uh, this, this unit is quite traceable and it forms interesting patterns across the property, which we're still trying to decipher, but we're identifying it in every one of our drill, co drill holes to date. As I was mentioning, the, 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 uh, the Golden Mile is very, very rich in, in many places. Um, the, the essential core zone of it uh, was averaged on surface over 20 grams per ton with a, with a, a width of a uh, sample width of 3.8 meters, a true width of about uh, uh, for about uh, three meters in, in this case. Um, as it's been, uh, as we've been drilling it, it's ladder, as I said, laterally continuous. And certainly we're, get, we're getting quite excited with every drill hole that we, we've been completing. 
the historical resource. It shows the concentration, the drill drill holes uh, in, into the central part of the vein structure uh, did, uh, that came up with about a, um, a million tons. Now, if you, you know, the, what we've been uh, looking at here is the fact that we do have uh, probably in the order of, of uh, uh, 100% more vein material that has yet to be detailed drilled and have a resource calculated on. Um, one of the features that we picked up on early as we were doing our research and looking over the old, looking over the historical results is that post this uh, calculated uh, uh, resource, there were, there were 90 more drill holes completed on the property that were not included in the resource calculation. And, of course, and uh, on top of that, we're, we're doing our own initial round of drilling here to try and test some of the theories that we're developing from the, from the as assemblage of the old uh, data. And we, we're pretty confident that, uh, there's, that not only is there upside potential in the, in the gold mile vein, but of the other dozen or so veins in the detailed explored area, it, we've got a like resource potential. And then, of course, outside of that detailed explored, explored area, is the blue sky so it's uh, we're, uh, we're starting that work right now as we in prior to starting drilling in december we we assembled the, the uh, in the uh, the detailed exploration area uh a number of targets uh, on the plan to it, shown on this slide we, we have uh four of the five target areas that we've developed um, with, uh, that exist within the, the detailed drill areas that we have historically. We've, uh, we, have uh, we have to date completed nine holes. We had the results for four, which we published at the start of this yesterday, pardon me, at the start of the week. And, and uh, what's great is that even though we're drilling, uh, we've drilled over uh, probably about five or 600 meters of strike length, each one of the holes that we drilled contained uh, intersections of the Golden Mile structure and, and veining. Uh, the the uh, structure, of course, is typically a, uh, has between uh, half a meter and four meters of quartz veining. It has up to 11 meters of this mafic, uh, metallic, <laughs> black mafic magnetic rock unit, which we believe is a dike rock. Um, which both of which are sulfide mineralized and both of which are uh, in the initial sa samplings carry uh, significant gold uh, content. Um, for, uh, one of the mafic units averaged uh, over 11 meters, I believe about uh, seven tenths of a gram. Uh, and, and the veining material was, was giving us results up to uh, five and a half grams per ton. So it's, it's, we're quite excited about the, about the work we're, we're doing here. So what have we done so far? Uh, we've had, since we had the prop property for a year, what what we've been able to accomplish is the compilation and digitizing of, of several terabytes of information that spans a seventy year history of the exploration of the property, and that and that has gone a long way to remodeling the the zones for in anticipation of of the the next forty three one hundred one report. In September, we were, we uh, we uh, had a broker deal with, with Canaccord for two and a half million dollar financing. It was oversubscribed by ten by the, the maximum amount to two point seven five million, which we've now been putting to work in the in the uh, in our earning our interest in the in the Hercules property. Um, so right after closing the operation, our geologists were on site. Uh, they were confirming and locating all of the historical drill holes, and and uh, and, and making sure that the the uh, sites for the sampling of the of the veins on the surface were all properly surveyed in, and there was some pretty substantial deviations on on the historical work that uh, that we've used to clear up some of the modeling. We actually brought in a third geologist and uh, to start look, uh, pulling out some of the historical core and. Uh, looking to see what has has and has not been sampled with respect to veins and shoulders to the veins and, we're, and the uh, with the idea being that because we're finding the uh, magnetic uh, mafic dike rock uh, carrying gold uh, there's quite a, a, a upwards uh, potential for a low grade fe feature within the high grade bonanza uh, veins um, and then of course uh, gold spot uh, discoveries 
the group that has, has done so well in Newfoundland with Newfound Gold and so forth, they have come on board and uh, as consultants to us and flown the whole property with a very detailed um, uh, AeroMag survey. And we've just now re received the preliminary reports back on that mag survey, and and it's and what we've been seeing as the potential of these magnetic uh, uh, associated rocks with the gold mineralization. Uh, there's, I believe, we're going to have a whole new interpretation with respect to uh, both structures and lithologies that'll put, that'll target us in on the other areas on the property that we. That, uh, should be examined for additional gold mineralization. Certainly there's gold occurrences in association that with the targets that they're identifying too. And of course, with the, uh, the, the uh, final thing we did was uh, starting in, in December was our drill program. And as I said, before the Christmas break, we had four holes completed. And Monday we announced the, the assay results from that first hole, first four holes. And we we're quite excited uh, because of that. And, uh, and of course, we're on hole, I believe, number nine, finishing that off currently. And, oh, and of course, uh, with, with the announcement on Monday, uh, we were able to put out uh, compilations on the, on the zones that we were drilled, that we got in the first four holes. Um, Salem points, all the holes inter intersected the Golden Mile Gold Zone. Certainly, the the uh, better grade zones, as you can see from the table, there uh, were five to f five and a half grams per ton, for, uh, averaging four grams over two meters. Uh, certainly, the, we've got uh, uh, the, we've got the right stuff uh, that we're finding now. You can see from the little photograph below there that in the, that hole in this, I believe, was the uh, the five gram intersection of hole three. The uh, the veining and the black uh, host rock. Uh, is quite visible, and uh, and this is what we're seeing in, in pretty much all of the holes that we've directed uh, uh, to date. Um, none of the holes that we've been drilling are twinned holes. None of them are uh, are you know uh, put into those zones that have already seen detailed drilling. These are fill infill and gaps uh, within the, the within the mineralized areas. So this this all of our drilling will be added to the resource and in combination with the 90 holes that weren't in the previous resource, there's a, there's a pretty good uh, possibility of this, of us being able to uh, very early stage expand on that million tons of, of uh, combined resource. A little bit about the company, the Golden Futures is a fairly new company. It's only a couple of years old right now. Uh, it was a, 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 a recreation of, of, I think it's called the European Minerals. Uh, we, uh, have currently about 146 million shares outstanding. Uh, we've uh, a few options at uh, about 6.8 million uh, uh, warrants from the financing of about 47 million. Uh, we've we've uh, see, seen a heck of a downdraft in the market with, uh, recently uh, with so many other the, of the junior equities, but I see, see a, a lot of a uh, lot of good upside as we uh, let people know what we're working on, where we're working on it and how it's developing into a gold asset for us and the shareholders. Um, I always like to point out the fact that, that uh, there's, there's um, very limited um, equity in the market held outside of the control positions and institutions. Uh, you know, you know, roughly about 30% of the company is in, is in the retail float, as we call it. Um, so that it's, uh, that there's, uh, we uh, that are part of the management of the company and the board and the founders, we've uh, we we believe in what we're doing here, and and uh, and we've shown that belief by by uh, buying paper in the company. Uh, we have uh, a, a quite a, an outstanding group of people that are behind this this group. Um, our lead geologist uh, Walter Hanich is is uh, quite a, a senior professional. Uh, Walter also is 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 driving the exploration work right now, also on. Um, Company called uh, I believe it's Signature, and uh, but he is uh, got guiding the drills and our consultants uh, with respect to the work here. Uh, Matt Fish is is uh, of course uh, uh, keeps uh, uh, me peeking over my shoulder and make sure I'm doing things right. Uh, he's our he's both treasurer and a director of the company. 
Um, and and Vicky, of course, Vicky Rosenthal's been with the, been with the group longest of all, I believe, as the CFO. So I, I droned on here long enough, guys. Uh, this is the contact information for the company. Uh, uh, I, I would like to point out that uh, our, our website is about to be uh, quite refreshed and brand new. I'm hoping that should be out by the end of this week. Uh, this presentation will be on that on the new website uh, together with the updates on on the properties. And I encourage you to take to visit the, the websites or to give me a call directly. I'm always open to answering questions and uh, and and, uh, and making sure that people understand what it is we are able to work on here. Uh, long and short of it, uh, we're focused on the Hercules property. Uh, we're driving our efforts to the uh, funding and exploration work on that property with the idea being of earning the interest for the for shareholders and having a, 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 an asset in a friendly mining jurisdiction within an established mining camp uh, and, and being unusual in one sense that it is both a high grade uh, vein deposit with associated lower grade sections so that we're, we'll have a uh, quite quite a uh, potential uh, uh, future, a golden future, as a matter of fact. Thank you very much, Tim. There you go. Great. Thank you very much, Stephen, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we'll now begin the Q and A portion of this webinar. Uh, a reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, we already do have a, a couple of questions. Um, first, and you had touched on this, but what are relations like with the local community and, and the First Nations? Uh, well, we, they're good, without a doubt. Um, and, and what we've done is we were quite proactive uh, prior to making our application for the drill permit and work permit on the site, which, of course, uh, the First Nations have, have a veto power over. Um, I contacted the, the uh, First Nations, while we were doing our financing in, in, in September, I introduced myself and the company to them. Um, at, uh, at, and uh, we set out on a sort of two, a two pronged path with them. One, of course, was to talk about the program that we want to do. And the second and the second part was um, I'm developing a, uh, an ESG strategy for the, uh, the company, the, the environmental, social and, and governance policies. And I provided them with my draft copy that I've been working on, and we're working together on 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 that ESG. I think it's quite critical to uh, to have the, a good working relationship and found it on those on those principles. The uh, and of course we've we've engaged co contractors and uh, from the from the First Nations uh, to be working with us in, in parallel with the geologists and so forth. Um, you know the 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 uh, there's. Um, the Beardmore based uh, um, Ojibwe group, of course, would be, uh, uh, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name because I am, I just tongue twist myself, but they, they are quite an industrial, industrial group. And they have two hydroelectric stations that they've built on, run, on the uh, river that runs along the south side of our property. And their power lines also run just along the south side of our property. So, so I can see a you know a developing great working relationship and uh, and so forth with them. I'm looking forward to actually being able to be COVID free and go and meet them finally too. Great. <laughs> and can you tell us more detail about the current uh, drilling program? What are the drill hole locations and what are they designed to to test? Well, what the all of the holes that we're working on right now, um, we're, we're working on effectively four um, uh, lines of drill holes. And the idea here is, is that uh, uh, we've seen where uh, the previous workers with Kodiak had, had discovered the continuous high grade zones. But when they seemed to step away from that, the, they lost the, the, uh, uh, the grade, let's say. What and of course lost interest and they moved on to other sites, but uh, they didn't have a proper interpretation of these detailed magnetic uh, signatures that went with along with the, the vein structure and the mineralized areas. Um, and you actually can see it uh, in our presentation where I've shown the trench map for the Golden Mile on the and the geophysical anomalies that are there. 
and the, the 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 association of some of the incredibly high grades with these magnetic dikes. Uh, we haven't got it totally figured out, but it looks like there's actually a uh, sort of a uh, literally an Xing of these dikes and and where the veining crosses those those intersections of the of the dikes. We seem to have super bonanza grades. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, one location, of course, I love to talk about. It. It's a plus ten thousand grams per ten, you know, grab sample that was taken out of the out of the uh, core zone. You know, what's that? About two or three percent gold. <laughs> so, but the uh, certainly the, uh, we uh, looking at the trenches, it's not hard to go and find new places with visible gold that weren't located previously, and uh, and and in coordination with these dikes. So, so what we've done is these four uh, lines of holes looking below the and through these magnetic dikes to see how it how well it, it shows up, and I think what we're going to find here is that um, there's an uh, interesting measurement for the economics of of, of gold mineralization that being gram meters, where you take the intersection of multi, uh, the greater than intersection times the width, and uh, where you would have um, you know uh, some of these higher grade gram meters, say 15 and greater, is definitely where you see the uh, magnetic dikes. So I'm so this is what we're directing our interest with, uh, and uh, and uh, certainly we're pretty pleased to see the continuity of the vein structure in the diking where we're drilling. So that's uh, and and uh, we are drilling over a plus five hundred meter long strike length in there too. So great. Um, and can you tell us more about the holes that you just uh, press released? Are those step outs? Are they, uh, I guess, where, what were they testing? Okay, holes uh, uh, one and two, uh, well, one, two, and three were all located at the northwest end of the, of the trench areas that, that uh, are in existence right now. And, and um, where, uh, the idea was to drill beneath uh, uh, surface sampling and it returned about 31 grams per ton over a couple of meters. And but there was no there was no true follow up under uh, to drill beneath these, the, the trenches. So uh, that one was a, pretty much a given. And we found that yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and in hole three particularly, uh, there was a strong reflection of the gold mineralization uh, in in those first three holes. The fourth hole was drilled a little further to the south. Uh, southeast, uh, again in a gap between two high-grade areas that just did not get get any attention, despite the fact that there was uh, you know, surface sampling that was quite excellent above it. Uh, uh, when I say excellent, it's probably, uh, as I recall, about ten grams and greater over a meter or meter and greater. So you're looking at possibly fifteen to twenty gram meters of surface sampling value. And uh, so what that's what we're trying to do here is we're, we're looking at these these areas that for whatever reason, the, the uh, Kodiak fellas just never got around to drilling. Great. Um, and then shifting over, can you tell us more about the uh, the recent deal that you had announced to to sell the Brady project in Newfoundland? <laughs> I'm really glad you asked that, Tim. The, the, that this is probably one of the, the the best mini deals that I've done in many years. Uh, the group that's buying ninety uh, percent uh, of our interest in the in this in this ground is uh, a, is a Nevada-based company called Beaver Gold Corp. Um, and we've signed the agreement with their Canadian subsidiary for three million dollars worth of three million dollars U.S. Uh, in stock in. The parent. Now the the stock is is uh, that'll give us three million shares, but it's a pre pre IPO stock. Uh, Beaver is in the process of li listing on on the Nasdaq uh, with a minimum share price of being four dollars a share U.S. Um, they anticipate later in the springtime being uh, listed and trading, and uh, and our stock will will uh, be uh, gradually released uh, to us. Uh, but think of the asset, 3 million shares at $4 US per share. Now it's at $15, $16 million worth of, of non-dilutive financing for our shareholders. And uh, that'll be very, very handy as we now, as once we break into the summer months and really go at the drilling that, uh, that uh, on the property. 
I mean, the property is very, very accessible all year round. But, you know, you all know, uh, <laughs> being, being somebody in the bush with a minus 40 degree wind chill is not very pleasant. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to get a lot more work done. And, and we'll be doing a lot of surface follow up this summer, too. So and this this is built in funding for, for us. And uh, and those that hold our, our, our shares are going to benefit from this. So it, it's you know, the it should turn around and give us an asset of greater cash value than our total market cap. Great. Yeah. Great. Um, and one question here back, I guess, to the to Hercules. Um, obviously, the current drill program is focused on on expanding from the resource. But you've also done, and I think you had mentioned some of the property-wide uh, exploration work that you've done with Goldspot. Can you tell us about what you're seeing with that that uh, sort of regional exploration and and maybe some of the targets there? Oh yeah, absolutely. The the one of the things that Goldspot has pointed out to us and uh, is um, what's the uh, and just as we we've been doing ourselves in the old files. The what's the, the geophysical representation of the of the area of, of intense exploration that I've talked about that's less than 10% of the property and cannot be replicated across the rest of the ground. Uh, Gold spots come up with a, a, with three, possibly four more of these areas, just like the where the Hercules uh, or pardon me, the uh, the gold mile veining is located uh, in other locations on the property based on geophysics and some of the, the historical sampling on so, site and so forth. Uh, so, um, what I like to think of as, uh, on the Hercules is that the golden mile and the associated veins occupies about a three to four kilometer long corridor within this intrusive host. We're seeing that replicated at least three times by the gold spot work, possibly four, uh, you know, uh, you know, for being, uh, ideal as targets. Uh, I'm really encouraged because uh, I, I was looking through some of the, the very old files uh, available with the, with the provincial government. And in the 1970s, the provincial government ran uh, throughout the Beardmore camp, the uh, a till sampling survey looking for uh, grains of gold in the till. And, and uh, what's neat about this is that yes, uh, on, on three of the four potential corridors, the government came up with good a good number of gold grains in the till, but not only were they good gold grains, but they were what I call delicate grains. In other words, they hadn't moved very far. It could well be they're literally sitting right above uh, uh, quartz, mineralized quartz veins or in, in areas. So uh, we, we're going to have months and months of fun looking at these things, and I'm sure we're going to come up with some pretty pretty good results based on some of the uh historicals that we've we've uh, dredged up going back many decades great uh quick question kind of shifting to the corporate side overall you had mentioned obviously with the uh the stock and in, in beaver gold that you own, but obviously it, and you had raised money uh, not long ago uh mm -hmm. how how much uh cash does the company have and how long will that or how much exploration will that fund well, um, of the two two point seven five million that we raised, um, uh, 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 seven hundred fifty thousand went for our, our option payment in October. Uh, we had um, we were uh, then uh, in we engaged Goldspot um, with a uh, with a uh, a contracted price for all of their work uh, for three hundred fifty thousand. Um, of the balance, we've we've put that into surface sampling and resampling of the of the core and the diamond drill program. And I estimate that when we finish this stage in the program, we'll net out at about four hundred thousand dollars. So we're so we're still uh, good to go. Um, we have warrants that are that are outstanding for roughly five five million dollars, and we have, of course, the stock in in Beaver Gold, which will be coming up, and uh, which ultimately would be at least uh, you know. Um, in the order of 12 million us dollars that uh, can be sold over the course of the balance of the year so so i think we're pretty well hewed with respect to to the finances going forward which is not sort of typical for for me and companies it's uh you know i'd like to look ahead i like to do um you know a creative deals for the for the company and and uh, uh certainly uh, uh we've done all of those so. great 
great. Uh, and one question here, kind of overall overarching strategy, I guess. Um, thinking ahead, what is the, the long-term strategy for the company? Would you like to, to advance uh, the Hercules project through development, or would you look to, to partner or, or sell to a producer at some point? Well, junior companies um, are best suited in mining for the development of, of, of gold-style properties. The reason for that is that they can be scaled. Uh, the capital is not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, impossible to to uh, to uh, obtain through all kinds of different financing methods. Uh, so uh, I see this as being a, a build out for the company. You know, the uh, it ultimately is will it's in a place where we have all of the all the necessary ingredients to to have a, a mine. What we want to do is we want to be able to uh, understand where we are going to be in terms of size. Uh, I, um, it's not hard to envision over the strike length of the Golden Mile properly drilled, but that, that's a million ounce target, target itself. If we have another dozen veins within that intensely explored area that we can be additive to, um, you know, the sky is your limit. But what I, I think uh, as important to, to as anything uh, is demonstration of the, the other three or four corridors that we identify, are identifying on the property. With that kind kind of of setup, uh, Golden Futures would would be a you know a good future producer, you know the and and uh, it's not like we'd have to be building somewhere in the tundra, somewhere you know in the middle of sort of Muskeg country or anything else. We are it's in a mining camp. It's got uh, paved road access right to uh, to uh, the base of the the Golden Mile. As a matter of fact, um, right up to a place called. Wilkinson Lake. No. no. <laughs> so anyways, that's a, that, I'm trying to think of a way to throw that in. But anyways, the, uh, uh, you know, the certainly we, the uh, I, I see this as being a build up um, from my perspective in terms corporately. Um, I'm I'm in the in the hunt uh, presently for uh, for a growth of the staff of the company as since we're, right now it's we, you know we're all in satellite operations and we're doing fine but as we build out we're gonna we're gonna need something like an office not my not my uh, home office like we have here uh, so but it's 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 a it's a, gonna be a, a building process as we go. And ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised if some later on this year, you know, uh, I announce an heir apparent to take over the, the running of the, of the company because it's going to get very busy. And uh, and it's certainly going to take more than me and a, and a couple of others to, to keep it keep it running efficiently. So so, yes, as we build the asset, we're going to build the company and ultimately uh, aim, aiming to, to pour that beautiful dory. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and given the, uh, that it is a vein style deposit, mm -hmm. uh, obviously it's preliminary at this point, but would this be an open, but it does come to service. Would this be an open pitable type project or would this be an underground mining project? Well, I think that there's a stacking of the veins here yet to be fully recognized. It, it's quite apparent with, with the, uh, you know, the golden mile and uh, lucky strike, all, all of these, uh, um, these structures within the area we're looking at right now. Um, interestingly, we did hit a, uh, a previously unnamed uh, vein in the foot wall of the, of the Golden Mile. It looks identical to the Golden Mile. And uh, of course, if, if you're looking for stacked veins, that's exactly what you want to find. If that's the case, then it could well be that the, the 400 or so acres, hectares, pardon me, of this, of the, of what, let's call it the primary Hercules area. It could be a big hole in the ground, uh, ultimately, uh, with all of the structures that are there. And uh, and uh, the, uh, as I said, there's roughly 12 that have been identified so far. Uh, but uh, e even as we're drilling, we're finding additional stacking of the veins. So I would think that you'd have a, an initial open pit. And then at the end of that open pit life, you'd, you'd be following the veins down. Okay, great. Um, and 
I don't think there are any other questions, but maybe kind of a general summary question here, just to review what news uh, would we expect to have over the coming weeks and months from Golden Futures? Oh, that's, that's not uh, that hard to answer either. We'll, uh, we will be very shortly, within the next few days, of course, announcing the, the new website. And, uh, and, and uh, that, that, to me, is, is important because it's, it's a step forward. We're building one that's got the capacity for expansion. And that's what I think we're going to need. Uh, on the heels of that, will be the the uh, work done by uh, Goldspot Discoveries, and there and I'm anticipating their report shortly after the end of this month, and uh, and with a, a good delineation of these other three three or four corridors of, of exploration potential. Um, and of course, there will be the, quite a discussion on the right within our our uh, go, the uh, uh, Gold Mile area also of, of uh, of indications of what we need to do. Uh, I'm hoping we will do a follow-up ground magnetic ground magnetic survey on a 25 meter scale in order to try to get the get a really good handle on on what these structures are and and how they impact the the grade and and with the mineralization as, as we're seeing it today. That will probably be it towards the um, the end of February early March. And then, of course, uh, by that time, we should have the last of our, our drill holes available for, for publication. And, uh, and, uh, the, and the next round of drilling should be starting uh, just after the, the uh, after breakup. Great. So it'll be a good news flow. Great. Well, yeah, lots to look forward to. Great. Yes. All right. Well, I'd like to, again, thank Stephen Wilkinson from Golden Futures Mineral Corp for presenting today. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back tomorrow afternoon when we present West Haven Gold, uh, Wednesday, January 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Jim.